Okay, let's start by um, thanking God for everything and anything as we always do. So we're just going to give thanks to God for the day. We're going to give thanks to God for the year. Can you believe we're basically at the end of February, which is wild. I feel like I just said all of two days ago that we were um, at the end of January or at the end of 2023. So let's just thank God for the speed at which we have come through February. And let's just thank God. And let's, sorry, two seconds. <laughs> Emma, you're going to have to mute yourself. Sorry. Um, sorry, she actually just left the chat. <laughs> sorry. So, I mean, you can come on, but you're going to have to mute yourself. <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, yeah, you just have to mute yourself. Yeah, so that it doesn't, it doesn't do that. Um, but yeah, sorry. We're just going to thank God for February um, and the great things that he has done. He has been amazing. He's kept us no matter how 2024 has started. We're still in this year. We're still going. We're still going strong, whether we like it or not. Um, no matter what you've done, we are still here. Um, so we're just going to thank God for everything. We're thanking him for the food we've been able to eat this year. We're th just thank God for absolutely everything. Just be grateful. I always say that there, we can never be too sure of things to thank God on. I don't know if that English makes sense. Um, but we're just going to thank God. Just I want us to all unmute, please, as it's a corporate prayer meeting. And let's just thank God um, and just give him all the thanks, all the glory, all the adoration for everything. Amen. Let's pray. Most gracious Father, we thank you, Lord. We praise you. We glorify and magnify your name. Lord, God, this month is only you, by you. Lord, this year so has only been by you. You say that, Father, it's through you and by you. God. We say, Lord, you are awesome. Father, thank you for being such a great God. Father, thank you for being so awesome. Thank you, Father, for your for your love, your kindness, your everything, oh God. We understand that what we have and who we are, Lord, is only by and through you. So, Lord, we say thank you, Lord. We say thank you for being such an awesome God. Thank you for being such an awesome Father. Thank you, Father, for keeping us. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you, Father, that your hand is never, ever too short. Thank you, Father, that you supply to us according to our needs, oh God. You know what we need more than we know what we need, oh Father. We just say thank you. Thank you, Father, that you don't give us what we want, but you give us what we need. Thank you, Father, that you watch over us in such a way that, Lord, we cannot fathom your greatness, oh God. Thank you that words are not even enough to fathom your greatness. Thank you, Father, that you continue to do for us beyond our imagination. You do exceedingly and abundantly above anything we can ask, hope, think, or even imagine. And Lord, for that, we just say thank you. Lord, we say we are so grateful, oh God. We say thank you so much, Father, for continuing to watch over us, Father, for keeping us, for your hand being upon us always, oh God. Father, we just say thank you. Thank you for your protection. Thank you, Father, for the great things that you do for us, oh God. Lord, there is nothing that we can do that would be enough to express our gratitude. But Father, we thank you that just to open our mouth and thank you is enough. And that's all that you require, oh God. Your words that we should enter your gates with thanksgiving and father we thank you oh god that father we can enter your courts with praise father we just say thank you oh god thank you for being so awesome thank you father for watching over us thank you that despite any struggles that we may have that father you still keep us you still uphold us oh god father we thank you so much oh god we thank you so much we thank you lord we thank you we thank you father we praise you we glorify you lord we thank you father we extol and we exalt you father we say that indeed you are an awesome god there is none like you oh god you are bigger than the biggest and greater than the greatest everything that we have father Father, is through and by you. We give you all the thanks. We give you all the praise. We give you all the adoration, Father. We say thank you so much. You are such an awesome God. That, Father, you are such a great God. Father, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our next prayer point um, is we are going to pray the prayer of repentance. So, sorry, repentance. I don't know why I said it like that. But we are going to pray the prayer of repentance. And we're just going to ask God to forgive us for anything that we may have done that was out of his will. Anything that we may have done that was out of his way. Anything that was completely 
away from what God wants us to do, what God wants us to be. We are asking in the name of Jesus that he would just cover us, that he would just give us the heart of repentance to know what it is that we have done that is sin before him, to see what it is that we have done that is without, that is not according to his will, his glory and his grace. Anything that we've done that is out of his kingdom, anything that we've done that does not represent him well, we are asking him right now for his forgiveness. We are asking his hand to be upon us. We are asking him to show us what it is that we've done that does not please him. What is it that we have done that does not look like him? What is it that we are doing? What is it that we're thinking? What is it that we are saying that is not pleasing unto him? We are asking right now in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit would search our hearts, that whatever he finds in us that is darkness, whatever he finds in us that does not represent the kingdom, we are asking the Holy Spirit to come in right now to search our hearts and take it out. If there's a thought that we've had, if it's something that we said, if it's a conversation that we had, we are asking ask him right now in the name of Jesus for the Lord to come and have his way in us, for his Holy Spirit to shine like a light in us and to reveal to us anything that is dark, that we would be able to go forth in the light that he's ordained for us to be, that we would not operate in darkness, we would not operate in our own way, we would not operate in our flesh, but we would operate in what he wants us to operate in, in the name of Jesus, amen. Let's unmute and let's pray. Most gracious Father, we come before your throne, O oh God. And Father, we just commit our hearts into your hands, O oh God. We say, Father, search our hearts, O oh God. If there is anything that we have done that's not pleasing unto you, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that, Father, your light would so shine in us, O oh God. That, Father, Lord, anything that is dark, Father, would be removed in the name of Jesus. We ask, Father, that you remove all darkness in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Anything, Lord, that does not represent you well. Anything, Father, that does not look like you. Anything that is sin before you, O oh God. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that, Father, you would have mercy. We pray, Father, that you pour your spirit upon us right now, O oh God, that, Father, we would see according to your will. We would do according to your ways, O oh God. Anything, Father, that is flesh, anything, Father, that is not according to your spirit, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that, Father, Lord, you take it out in the name of Jesus. Father, whatever is in us, O oh God, any thought, any desire that is in us, Father, that is sin before you, O oh God. Father, today we come before you and we say, Lord, shine your light in us, O oh God. Remove all darkness in the name of Jesus. Father, remove all darkness in the name of Jesus. We ask, Father, take all darkness out, oh God. Let it be removed in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we ask that you search our hearts right now, oh God. Search our minds, oh God. Search our thoughts, oh God. If there is anything, Father, that we have done, Lord, that does not please you, anything that we have done <coughs> that does not represent you, oh God. Father, we pray that you would have mercy. Have mercy upon us, oh God. Have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray. Lord, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come in, come in us, O oh God, that, Father, we may do according to your will. We may go according to your way, O oh God. Let it not be according to the flesh, but, Father, by your spirit, O oh God. We are moving according to your spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are saying, have your way, O oh God. Have your way in and through us, Father, in everything that we do, Lord. We are praying, Lord, have your way in the name of Jesus. Have your way in our hearts, O oh God. Have your way in our minds. Lord, we are praying in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would have your way. Anything that does not look like you does not represent you, Father, we ask that you take it out in the name of Jesus and Lord that you would have your way. Father, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, we're gonna get straight into it. I don't know how long we have today, but um yeah, we're gonna do what we can with the time that we have. So the book of Psalms, chapter 91 and verse one. Um, what have we been treating? What's our theme for this month? Anyone wanna type it in the chat? Either of the chats, what's our theme? for this month what is our theme for this month abide exactly thank you thank you thank you um hi prefect i'm just gonna uh, make you co-host because yeah i'm not even asking you if you can do it i just know that you can thank you co-host um but yes it is abide. So we are learning to abide. And I did want us to continue John 15. Um, but then God led me to Psalm 91. And I was like, hey, here's that word again. So we're going to look at Psalm 91 verse 1. Very popular scripture. We should all kind of sort of maybe know off head. So Psalm 91 and verse 1. And we're going to read the NKJV version. I've got it here. Um, should have gone to our copy and paste it. Okay, Psalm 91, verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. 
Amen, amen, amen. We're going to break down this scripture. Um, I'm hoping that we can pray it through today. Um, if we can't, then I will give you enough to pray on in your own time, in your secret place with God. Amen. So he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I've just lost all my notes. Okay, it's here. Okay, so first of all, to dwell. Okay, let's, let's talk, actually. Let's have a discussion. What does it mean to dwell? What does it mean to dwell? I'm sure all of us at some point have quoted this scripture, right? Especially when Corona was going around. This is like the Christian anchor scripture. Um, to meditate, yep. Anything else? Anyone else? I'll take like two more. On YouTube or on Zoom. Let me actually put these side by side. That'll make my life easier. Come on guys, what does it mean to dwell? Are we creating a scripture that we don't even understand to remain? Yep, amen. Anything else? Just one more and we'll move on. But yeah, what does it mean to dwell? To stay there until something happens. Oh, I like that one. Amen, amen, amen. Um, so yes, all of, these, all of these definitions are correct. So according to the Hebrew definition, oh, I didn't put what the Hebrew word was, but um, <clears throat> the Hebrew definition to dwell is to remain. Uh, Leslie said to remain. So to remain, to sit, to abide. Um, so to dwell also means to abide. To be set, to remain, to stay, to have one's abode, um, to be inhabited, so to live, um, to place to cause to sit, to cause to abide, um, to cause it to be in heaven. Okay, it's just saying the same thing again and again and again. So it says, he who dwells, so he who meditates, he who sits, he who remains, he who stays, he who has their abode, he who lives in the secret place of the Most High. Okay, we're going to build up this scripture because I want us to fully understand this scripture, what it means when we quote this scripture, because a lot, of, a lot of the time we're quoting scriptures because they sound nice, but we don't actually understand the depth of what it is we're saying. So he who sits in the secret place of the Most High, he who stays in the secret place of the Most High, he who lives in the secret place of the Most High, he who inhabits, he who sets his place in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under, under the shadow of the Almighty. So let's look at secret place. To be in a secret place, um, what's a secret place? Because we all should be having our secret place with God. So what does it mean to have a secret place? What does it mean to have a secret place? Or what is a secret place, should I say? What is a secret place? Intimate place, yep. Anything else? I'll take three again. I mean, guys, we all have our secret places with God, no? Quiet time in his presence. Yeah, one more. I have to keep going back and forth between these two. Come on, one more. A safe place with the Father. Amen. So secrets, again, according to Hebrew, none of those answers are wrong. Um, but the Hebrew definition is a covering, a shelter, a hiding place. Um, it's a secret place, obviously, secrecy. Um, it's a covering, it's cover, Okay. So when we dwell, oh, 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 sorry, YouTube is saying a lot of stuff. So uh, it's in God's presence where we deepen our relationship with God. And it's also an intimate and quiet space where you can go and communicate with God. Exactly. So what it is saying here, and I'm going to have to try and say the scripture, and it's going to be a mouthful now. But he who stays in the, uh, what word am I going to use? He who stays in the quiet time in his presence. That doesn't make sense with the full scripture, but you know what I'm trying to say. Who who stays in the safe place with the father, he who stays in an intimate and quiet space where they can go and communicate with God. Those are the people that shall abide under, <clears throat> sorry, under the shadow of the almighty. Now we already know what abide means. So we don't need to go back to abide. But to abide means to dwell, to stay. Again, it means to be one with. My favorite definition of abiding was to be one with. So what this scripture is saying to us is he who stays in that place with the father, in that secret place, in that intimate place with the father, that person, it, only that person is the one who is going to 
stay in and become one with the shadow of the almighty. Now, what I love about the scripture is every single word has this deep, deep meaning, like to be under a shadow. If you're under a shadow, you are protected. Okay, so the Hebrew definition of shadow is just shadow or shade. But deeper than that, it's shadow or shade as protection. So it means that you are protected by God. So we can quote this scripture. But what the scripture is telling us is that if we don't have a secret place with God, there is no protection. There is no abiding. There is no becoming one with God's protection. There is no staying under his shadow. And when you're under the shadow of something, it means you're very close to it. There is no way that an object can be in Timbuktu and you can be here in London or in Ghana or wherever you may be. And the shadow will come upon you. To be under the shadow of something means that you are in close proximity to it, which is why being in the secret place makes sense. If you're in the secret place with God, you are close to God and you are protected by him. If we are not in the secret place with God, if we do not stay in that secret place, if we do not stay under that covering, which is why I love the secret place being a covering as well. If we're not in that place with God, if we are not making time, if we're not spending time with him, if we're not creating that intimate space, if we're not creating that quiet time, there is no protection. There is no being close to God. There is no intimacy with him. We're going to pray today. And we've prayed this prayer many, many times. But I do not believe that we can outpray anything in this life. We're going to pray right now that God would give us what we need to be in that secret place. We're praying that he would remove all distractions, the distractions that are keeping us from the secret place. Because what the Lord is saying today is that we are still very, very distracted. There are still things that we are doing that we think are more important than being in his secret place. There are still things that we are doing that are taking our time, that are distract. That is, dist there are things that we are doing that are taking away our mind from him taking away us being protected by him. To be protected by God is to commune with God. When you speak to God, he said about Abraham, should I hide what I'm doing from Abraham? We want him to say the same thing from us. Should he hide what he's doing from us? If we're staying in that secret place, God has no choice but to let us know what he's doing, to let us know what his plans are, to let us know what it is he wants to do, to let us know what he wants us to do, to let us know what he wants us to pray. We're doing things, we're praying, we're doing this, we're doing that. But if we're not having our secret place with him, these things that we're doing, we're doing in our own flesh. We're doing it according to how we think it should be done. I don't know about you, but I want to stay under the shadow of God. I want to be in close proximity to God always. That every single thing that I do, I'm not guessing what needs to be done. I'm doing things with accuracy. I'm doing things because God has told me to do these things. We are praying, Lord, remove all distractions. Anything that distracts me from creating that secret place with you, remove it. Anything that distracts me from doing what it is you need me to do, remove it. Anything that's distracting me that I cannot keep time with you, that I'm saying I'm too busy. There's a quote that I saw on Instagram and it said, um, how can we, I'm going to get it wrong, but something along these lines, we, how can we be inconsistent with God on earth, but want to spend eternity with him? Does that make sense? Anna, does that make sense? It doesn't, we cannot want to be, <clears throat> or we cannot be inconsistent with God here on earth, but then we're planning to spend eternity with him. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. So we're going to pray today, Lord, whatever's distracting me, maybe I don't even know that I'm distracted. If whatever is distracting me, whatever is taking the secret place in my life, whatever is taking that time that I'm supposed to be spending with you, I ask that you remove it. I've had to quote the scripture a few times this week. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. I've had to quote that a number of times this week in conversations. And I'm going to use it in this context right now. If your right hand causes you not to have intimate time with God, causes you not to have, not to have that secret place with God, causes you not to create that secret place with God, cut it off. Anything that takes our time away from God is an idol. Anything that takes our time away from God means that we treat that thing as more important than God, than God. We are prioritizing that thing over God. I'm not going to reel off what distractions could be. You know what your distractions are. Okay, so we're going to pray right now. And we're saying, Lord, whatever it is that is taking your place, that is taking the time for the secret place, reveal it to me. Maybe I don't even know what it is. Maybe I don't even see that it's a distraction. I ask right now that, Father, you reveal it to me and you take that thing away in the name of Jesus. Just take it away. I do not want that thing. If you want that distraction, please respectfully don't pray this prayer. If you're happy with that distraction, please don't pray this prayer. But if you are serious about being in a secret place with God and dwelling under the shadow of the Almighty or abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, 
then we're going to pray this prayer with all sincerity and we're asking Lord remove the distractions remove the thing that keeps me from you I don't care what it is I don't care who it is if it's more important than you I don't want it if it's taking your place in my life I do not want it amen let's unmute on zoom for those that are on zoom and let's pray Heavenly Father, we come before your throne, O oh God, and we pray in the name of Jesus that, Father, anything that takes your place, anything, Father, that takes our, our thoughts away from you, anything, Father, that keeps us from praising you, anything that keeps us from having a secret place with you, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that, Father, you would take it away, O oh God. We ask, Father, that you remove it in the name of Jesus. We are asking, O oh God, that you would enter, O oh God, into our hearts and find what it is, Father, that is taking us away from you. Find what it is, Father, that is keeping us from you and father take it out in the name of jesus we surrender ourselves to you today father we say lord enter into our hearts oh god take out the things that father do not represent you take out the things that are distracting us from you oh god take out the things father that are keeping us from spending time with you oh god take out the things father that are not being prioritized we ask in the name of jesus that father you take out anything oh god anything anyone oh god if it's a job if it's a situation if it's a person oh god wherever father is keeping us distracted from you lord we are asking in the name of Jesus, that Lord you remove it, oh God. We are asking, Father, that you take it out, oh God. Father, we are asking that you enter into our hearts, oh God, and that Father, you remove every distraction in the name of Jesus. We are asking, Father, that Father, you take out anything, Father, that does not look like you, anything, Father, that does not speak well of your word, anything, Father, that does not speak well of you, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that Father, Lord, you would just let your will be done. Lord, let your kingdom come, oh God. Oh, we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, have your way, O God. Have your way in our hearts, O God. Remove anything, O God, that Father keeps us from loving you, that keeps us, Father, from spending time with you, O God, that keeps us from prioritizing you. We ask, Father, that you would be our priority in the name of Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit come, O God, and search out anything, Father, that takes us away from you. Anything, Father, that keeps us from you, O God. We ask in the name of Jesus that, Father, you would have your way. Lord, have your way in the name of Jesus. Father, have your way that, Father, you we can abide in you, O oh God. That Father, we can be in that secret place, O oh God. That Father, we shall dwell in the secret place, O oh God, and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That Father, we can truly abide under the shadow of the Almighty, O oh God. Father, pour your spirit upon us, O oh God. Keep us, O oh God. Keep us, Father. Keep us in the name of Jesus. Keep us, O oh God. Keep us, Father, at your feet, O oh God. Keep us seeking your face, O oh God. I pray that Father, you.